Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, Professor of Physics, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. We've made it all the way to October. It's October 2nd, 2023. This time around is the week we're talking about, so we're going to look at the week ahead from there. Uh, last week, uh, we, we talked about the planets because the moon was so full, it was washing everything out. And the moon starts the week pretty full again this week. Uh, but we're gonna, we talked about Venus at the end of last week's uh, video. Go out and watch last week's if you, if, if you want. And Venus was right on top of Omicron Leonis. And it starts the week again there this week. So in the early morning of the 2nd, uh, Venus is only about 1 degree. Uh, so this is the morning uh, of Monday, October 2nd. So after Sunday night into Monday morning. Uh, you'll see Venus, I, I just probably rise as I haven't been paying attention, I've been seeing it every morning, but by 4 o'clock, it's probably up pretty well in the sky, 4.30. Um, but you can see it right up until it gets, it gets light, and so you can see this region of the sky, uh, 5, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, you can still see this region of the sky right now, as we're getting dark later, light later and later and later. Um, anyway, Venus is only starts the week there on the 2nd, only about 1 degree above Omicron Leonis. Remember, one degree is about your finger held out at arm's length like this. And so very close, very nice pairing uh, to just continue what we were looking at last week. Now, we've said this before and we'll say this again. If you ever had any doubt that the planets move, just watching Venus here for a week is going to cure you of those doubts, presumably, because Venus is sliding off toward Regulus. Regulus is the brightest star in Leo, and it sits at the base of the sickle shape of Leo. Uh, looks something like this, right? You've got this backward question mark in Leo, and that's Regulus. It's that bright star right at the base of Leo. And Venus is tracking in the easterly direction toward Regulus, so that a week later, on the morning of the 9th, so if we look one week later, Venus will be sitting right below Regulus, about two and a quarter degrees below Regulus. And that, that's, a, that's a journey of maybe seven degrees or seven plus degrees, uh, two-thirds of a fist width or three-quarters of a fist width at arm's length, that Venus has moved from Omicron Leonis over to Alpha Leonis to Regulus out here uh, in one week. Uh, very, very noticeable. So you can start the week by observing how close it is to Omicron Leonis, but also pay attention to its distance from uh, Regulus here, the brightest star in the base, uh, the brightest star in Leo, the bright star in the base of the backward question mark, the sickle, and watch Venus close right down on it, and one week later, it's going to be right underneath it. And beautiful pairing. Now that day, in the morning, uh, in, the, in the morning of the 9th, uh, a, a week from uh, the Monday where we start, the moon's also going to be about a fist width, uh, 12 degrees above and west of Regulus, and the moon's going to be about 25% full at that point. So the moon that started the week very near full because it washed us out the previous week uh, fades away. It wanes away during, and by, by this point you've got a beautiful crescent moon in the morning with Venus and Regulus. That's the morning of the 9th. Uh, it'll be very good the next morning as well on the morning of the 10th, so we'll start next week's a uh, little film about what to see in the night sky. If I remember, we'll start it with that as well next week and just continue to kind of flow one week into the next week into the next week as we do, as the sky rolls on. So this is great. Keep an eye on Venus in the morning sky. Worth getting up for. If you don't get up at that time, it's worth getting up to check Venus out and to see some of these things. So we've got that. Now, let's look at a couple of other things. Uh, thinking about the moon. The moon starts the week about 80% full, so it's still pretty bright and washing stuff out all over the place. So on the evening of the second, you've been up in the morning watching Venus, you, after, just after dark in the evening, you stay up for a couple hours after sunset, I don't know, 9 o'clock, uh, let's say uh, 10 o'clock, this, this will get up into the sky where it's pretty easy to see. By 10 o'clock it'll be very easy to see. The moon's about 80% full. Uh, on the evening of the 2nd, so it's still pretty full. Remember, it's gonna, by, by the 9th, it's going to have waned away to about 25% full. So you see it pretty full here, and a big gibbous moon. And it sits only about 2 degrees, 2 and a half degrees away from the bright star cluster, the Pleiades, in Taurus. So it's, got, it's so bright, it's going to wash those stars out. But that's a big, bright star cluster. Those stars are bright and relatively easy to see. So get your binoculars out and check out the Pleiades, sitting next to the moon, a great pairing there. Now, only about a fist and a half width down to the south, fifth, a fist and a half width at arm length 
um, to the south and west of this region of the sky is Jupiter. So big bright Jupiter is, is in the region with the moon and the Pleiades to start the week on Monday evening uh, into Tuesday morning. You can see that the rest of the night into Tuesday morning. Uh, so this is, this is a great thing to see uh, where Jupiter is there. And we're going to return to this and talk about this in just a second. We're going to use Jupiter to find some of the stars in Cetus. Uh, but let's, uh, before we do that, let's look at the early morning of the, uh, the 7th uh, in the, the a.m. So we're talking about now uh, Saturday morning. Um, so Saturday morning, relatively early. By that point, the moon's already down 40% full or something. So the moon's waning away and not providing such a big glow to wash things out. But the moon will be sitting just below Pollux in Gemini. So you've got Gemini stars, Castor and Pollux, the twin stars right there. Just below that pairing is the moon, less than two degrees away from Pollux. You've got the moon at 40% full. And if you keep going just below the moon, it's your chance to identify Kappa, a three and a half magnitude star. So a sort of between a third magnitude star and a fourth magnitude star, uh, Kappa will be sitting just below the moon. So you see Castor, Pollux, Moon, Kappa, uh, Kappa Gemini, Geminorium, uh, would be the, the stars that we would be looking at in that region. So a great chance to see uh, the, the moon uh, pairing with some stars. So that's what this week's about. This week is about uh, largely, you know, Venus moving is great and, and making a nice pairing with two stars in Leo. But the moon passing by various stars uh, as, as it passes along here is, is, a, is a good week for this. And, and, you know, probably we haven't spent, Castor and Pollux we talk about all the time in here, the big bright stars in Gemini. And they, you know, they're close to the uh, ecliptic, so they're close to the path of the planets and the, the moons. And we see them doing things like this. But I'm not sure we've ever used the chance to talk about uh, Kappa uh, Geminorium here at all. And so I'm not sure this is anything that we've ever actually discussed. So it's a chance to identify a new star for you, maybe. I don't know. Now let's go back to Jupiter. Uh, all week long, you can use Jupiter and say about three and a third degrees. Remember, fist width and arm's length, 10 degrees. One finger and arm's length, about one degree. So a couple of fingers and arm's length, uh, a little bit more than that. Uh, you, you're going to have, uh, just sitting below Jupiter, is you're going to have Mu Ceti, a 4.3 magnitude star. So not a real bright star, but a visible star sitting about three degrees directly below, three and a third degrees directly below uh, Jupiter. You drop on down four and three quarters degrees, okay? No, 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 not as bigger than that. Uh, where is it? Uh, you drop on down about twice that distance. I don't think I wrote it on the board. Uh, the four and three quarters is over here. The three and a third degrees is about twice that. So you go out twice as far straight on down, and you come to Gamma Ceti. Gamma Ceti is a three and a half magnitude star, so noticeably brighter than Mu Ceti. And Gamma Ceti is a binary star. It's a, it's, a, it's a pair star that you can split with your small telescope. It's not an easy split at 2.7 arc seconds. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, not this star, but, but splitting uh, variable stars, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, 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 so double stars like this. And so the two components of the system are about 2.7 arc seconds apart. So you might see them merged a little bit depending on how turbulent your skies are. But you might see a little space between them. It's a great, it's a great uh, double star and worth the time to get your small telescope out to split this double star gamma setting. Move on over. Now there's your four and three quarter degrees on over this direction. You get Menkar, uh, the alpha star in this region. A two and a half magnitude star, and then move back up another four, four and three quarter degrees over, about four and three degrees over, and you've got Lambda Ceti. So you go from Mu, you go from Jupiter down to Mu Ceti to Gamma Ceti. Spend some time with Gamma Ceti with your telescope, and then you've got this this pattern of stars that marks uh, the upper edge of Cetus, the sea monster there. So you, we've got these stars in Cetus. See if we can find those stars. Uh, enjoy Jupiter and enjoy Gamma Ceti. And, and that's what we got for you this week. We got the moon, we got Venus, we got Jupiter guiding our, our way to the stars and see this and, and using the chance to, to pull apart a nice double star. So, uh, as always, everyone, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week of observing ahead and you get to see some interesting things.